coming at you live. It's uh, about 7.13 a.m. on a Thursday morning. Uh, my wife had to go into work early. The baby is asleep, probably not for much longer. But I wanted to whip out a quick video because I got this in the mail the other day and I wanted to just keep up and since I'm technically unemployed and have a lot of free time moving into the house and everything. You can see I've got some stuff organized. You can see the, the game library there and that, that's only half the boxes. I need more shelves. Anyway, today is a video du jour is going to be Imperial Histories 2. For Legends of the Five Rings, fourth edition. Now, little little note about fourth edition. I was so opposed to this when it came out. I was just mad because first and second edition to me are awesome. Uh, I played in a first slash second edition campaign for whew, at least a, over a year with my good friend Brian and uh, my friends back in California. Um way back in the heyday when it was uh, uber popular and John Wick was still at the helm. And uh, years later, John Wick would become my roommate for a short period of time when he moved to Arizona and he needed a place to stay. And it was uh, interesting having him as a roommate. That guy can, that guy can type. And, um, but neither here nor there. So I was so opposed to, I, I didn't even like third edition. And then of course they did a D20 version, which, I think I have the core book for the D20 because it had really cool maps in it. Uh, it came with some maps. Uh, WotC, uh, Wizards of the Coast, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, whoever the hell, Hasbro, whatever the hell your moniker is now, go back to putting maps in your publications. It's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And us grognargs, we like our maps. Um, but uh, Imperial Histories 2, this further expounds upon Imperial Histories 1, which... Imperial Histories 1, I don't have it in the collection, I don't believe. Uh, nope. I got several of the books. I've got the third edition book, the core book. Um, and then, of course, I have fourth edition. Um, so anyway, like I said, when when third and fourth edition came out, I was I was not happy. I was like, uh, you're taking my beloved game and you're, you're throwing it by the wayside. And, I, and I'm not a happy guy. You know, so I was I was grumpy, and I am Mister Mean after all, and I like the uh, keep die. Hey, Farrell James, what's going on, sir? He lo he, James says he loves the rollover and a check the shelves. Yeah, um, <clears throat> and, and and James, that's not even that's that's not even half. Uh, and that's uh, how many shelves is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven shelves. And that's not even half. And it, you can't see the very top shelf, but there's some there's there's some dead space right there, and then the shelf above it has about just as much dead space. Yeah, I, I need some shelving units. <laughs> uh, anyway, so Imperial Histories two. What's in? here? Well, first of all, it says thirty nine ninety five. These are out of print now, I believe. Uh, AEG has given up the license. This was published by AEG Aldrich Entertainment Group. They are real big with board games now and card games. Uh, they gave up the license to L5 Hawk, L5R or Legends of the Five Rings, the card game, which is still crazy enough popular. I don't know who's playing it because I've lived in three different states in the last five years, six years, and I haven't seen anybody playing it. So I don't know where it's popular at, but evidently it's still popular. They're putting out cards for it. They've got a new living card game or something. I don't follow it. I don't know anything about it. I'm not a huge card flopper. I do play a little bit of magic and every once in a while I'll play uh, certain little card games like uh, I can't even find it now, but I got a space one. I can't, I can't remember what it's called, but it's not, it's not a, it's a trading card game. It's not a collectible card game. It's a deck building game. Uh, I can't think of the name of it right now. And I play uh, um, uh, Sentinels of the Multiverse and I'm waiting for my Kickstarter for the, I ordered the Oblivion box. So you're going to see a huge unboxing of that. Cause this thing is, it's ginormous. It's going to hold all the cards to date. And I went Gonzo one. I got the big Uber collectors box and all the special heroes and everything. So it's going to be awesome. And then those wacky guys over at, uh, uh, mutants and masterminds, they decided to jump on the bad wagon and put out a mutants and masterminds version of Sentinels of the Multiverse. So uh, very excited about that. 
Uh, oh, you just want to see me roll over to the giant bookshelf of games. Uh, Feral Games Inks, aka James, ask, what's the rule book look like? Well, this is the. I don't have my glasses on. So this is the fourth edition rule book. So hopefully everybody can see that. <laughs> he says, I jerk. He just likes watching me roll around. Don't make me pull out all four editions of Legends of the Five Rings because I can. Uh, and actually, I technically have the playtest documents for the new uh, fifth edition, which is going to be done by Fantasy Flight Games, which I have to say, don't like it. They're going to proprietary dice, uh, like their Genesis and Star Wars system, uh, uh, it appears. Uh, and I'm just, I don't know if that's been changed. because I haven't, Once I saw that, I, I was out. And I, I don't like, they're still using the roll keep method that is uh, popular with the Legends of the Five Rings system. But it's just gone too crunchy for me. I, I like the, I like second edition as my ultimate favorite. Um, first edition was okay, but it had some bugs. Second edition, I felt they cleaned it up really well. A uh, bunch of typos and stuff in it and some grammatical errors, but still, it's a role-playing game. You know, I don't expect a college textbook. <laughs> what a surprise, James says. You're absolutely right, sir. Um, that's the same thing I thought. And uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if they wanted to keep it its own separate game line and not. they weren't sure if Genesis would take off, but... I mean, Genesis seems to be doing well. In fact, I'm getting ready to run a Terranoth, Realms of Terranoth uh, session uh, Monday. I've got three players. We're going to make characters and we're going to play for a little bit. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I've got two sets of the uh, Genesis dice. And of course, I've got like six sets of Star Wars dice, which you can use. Uh, the colors are slightly different, but the symbols are very, very similar. So it's not going to be a problem. But anyway, uh, Imperial History is two. Why did I pick this up? Well, I picked it up because I knew the line was dead, and I'm a completist. I like to have all the books, and I'm missing a couple. I don't know how many I'm missing, but I know I'm missing a couple. And now that I have them out, and I think that's all of them, I'm going to try and see places like Miniature Market or GameNerds.com are great resources to pick up out-of-print stuff. They, I don't know how they get a hold of this stuff, but and they usually have pretty decent prices. GameNerds.com uh, seems to be winning the price war on average, two to three dollars over miniature market, and they have the same rates on shipping. They both have a points program for every dollar you spend, you get a penny. Shameless plug for both of them because I've used both services, and their shipping is usually relatively fast. You get your stuff within a week or so, four, four to seven days on average. Um, and they've been great. Um, I pre ordered uh, Vampire of the Masquerade, the fifth edition. A big review will be coming for that, uh, when it comes in, but it hasn't even, I don't, I, th I don't think it actually gets physically released until August, I think, of this year. Um, I could be wrong on that, but uh, if putting the notes below once this goes up on YouTube, I'm just spitting this out because I was up super early and uh, I wanted to just get a video out. So what's in here? Man, I got to say, I don't, I, had, I don't physically have Imperial Histories 1. If I do, it's in a box somewhere and I'm not sure. Uh, but what's in here I like? Um, it's Alternative Histories. Oh, I got water on my book. I don't know how I got water on it. Oh, I set it on top of my coaster. I have a really cool Dragon Eye coaster that I got from Dungeon Crate. Um, if you don't know what Dungeon Crate is, go back in the archive and check a couple of my videos. Uh, I don't think it's worth the bang for the buck, but that's just my opinion. But that was something cool I got out of it. So anyway, Imperial Histories, what do they give you in here? They give you a ton of shit. I'm just going to read the blurb on the back. Uh we tell the tale of heroes to remind ourselves that we are we also can be great. The Tao of Shinsei. Uh, one of the things I love about L5R, and I started doing it in a lot of my games, especially in my Warhammer games when I was running Warhammer Fantasy, um, is they do these quotes from notable characters in the universe. And I did that uh, for Warhammer because Warhammer did the same thing. And I think it's really cool. It adds a little flavor to your game. It helps get your players in the mood. And, and I would I would always... And I'm going to go back to this. I haven't done it in a long time because I haven't had a stable group. But hopefully, now that I'm settled in here in uh, Duluth, I, I can get a stable group going, is every game session I would have a printout. And it would kind of do a short recap of last session. It would list the players and their characters' names so everybody had access to it. And I usually would have two to three questions like, 
what do you want to accomplish in the future? Uh, what was your favorite thing about tonight's session? Uh, what was your least favorite thing? Um, and vote for the best role player. And those are anonymous. I don't read them out to the other players. They fill them out. They're free to talk amongst themselves, but I don't want any pressure put on the players. So basically what happens is they give it to me, and then at the end of the session or later on in the week, I'll email that player and say, hey, you got some extra experience. Everyone thought you were the best role player. Um, there's pros and cons with that system, and we'll go into that maybe at another time for GMing, but I like doing it. It, it suits my style of GMing, and the players I've had haven't had a problem with it. So I, I've heard cons where some people get intimidated or they feel, you know, it's too much pressure. I haven't heard that, but I haven't felt that in my games. And I've done it at convention games where I didn't know anybody and really didn't have a problem. But the cool thing with convention games, and if you've never run a game at a convention, I highly recommend you giving it a shot because you can, uh, you, you can, you, you meet some great people and, there's no inhibitions because you don't know anybody. So it's like, meh, you do the best you can and you have fun with it. Uh, James is saying something here. And the UK games lore are pretty good. And Modifius does a, a point thing. Yeah, I'm on Modifius. I've, uh, I'm a huge fan of it. I, I kickstarted uh, Infinity. Um, I got Conan off their website because I couldn't kickstart it at the time. And I, I couldn't kickstart Mutant Chronicles, which I'm a huge fan of. And that was their first big breakout game was Mutant Chronicles. And it did really well on the Kickstarter. Um, I don't think it broke any records, but it still did well. <clears throat> and it took that gentleman from working out of his garage with his, I think his girlfriend or his wife um, to making a full fledged business. And now they are one of the monsters on the block over in the UK, uh, and they've got a, what appears to be a very good reputation. Um, Chris Birch is the uh, commander in chief over there at uh, Modifius, and uh, I've dealt, I've talked to him once or twice, and seems like a stand-up guy. Uh, a lot of people are grousing because he's putting all his games out on Kickstarter, but he has not done all of his games on Kickstarter. Um, Star Trek was not done via Kickstarter. Uh, he's done a couple other small little games that were not on Kickstarter. Uh, he got started with Mutant Chronicles, of course, Conan, and Infinity was on Kickstarter. And I'm, I'm in wave two of Infinity because I ordered a bunch of different stuff. I didn't go crazy, but I, I, I did drop like a hundred and something bucks total. But they gave me the hardback book. I, I got all the PDFs. I got the GM level or whatever. So obviously a huge review coming for that when it comes through. But yeah, Modifius is a pretty stand-up company. They give you good points. And when they have their sales, I just, because I'm here in the States, so you know how shipping is, James. You, you deal with it all the time being a small small business owner. The uh, uh, I save those points up when I order from their website. And then when they have a sale... I take advantage of that because then I can get this. Uh, I think last year they did free shipping and I had like enough points to get one of the Conan books for basically for free. So it worked out really well. So anyway, um, but not ordering much from Modifius right now because they're a little bit on the pricey side when you factor in that shipping and still being unemployed. Uh, I can't really afford to go buy a lot of game books. I, uh, I'm getting assistance here in Minnesota and it's been great. And my wife is working now, so that's good. Um, but I donate plasma. It's a thing you can do here. I don't know if you can do it over there, but over here, and they they pay you thirty three bucks a visit. You can go you can go twice a week. So you know sixty six bucks a week, and then they have incentives for the more you go during a month, the more you get. So it's it's pretty cool. Um, I think last month I had two hundred and something dollars on my card because I didn't I didn't spend anything. Sorry for the sirens in the background. We've had really bad weather here all night. It has stormed. My internet just came back up. So. Anyway, got sidetracked. It's early, not awake yet. Haven't had coffee because I have to go do the whole plasma thing. So I don't want to jack myself up with caffeine, drinking water, you know, my Dickies cup. Woohoo. But anyway, Imperial Histories 2. What is cool about this one? I don't have one or I don't have access to it right now. So I don't know what was in it. I don't remember because um, I don't play this game. Like I said, I was opposed to this game when it first came out. I was just like, ah. I just don't don't want to, you know, why I don't want to learn a new version of a game that's already perfect, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, it has some flaws, but it's a good game. Um, and then I went to a convention last year in Austin, and the Camarilla guys, the Vampire of the Masquerade guys, were there. And because Vampire has been kind of quiet the last couple of years, except this year, it's really picked up steam because of the new 5th edition coming out. Um, 
So those guys had switched over to Legends of the Five Rings and they were working for AEG doing demos. And so I didn't have anything in that time slot and I, I didn't want to go back to the room and hang out. So I was like, fuck it, I'll sign up for it. And I played and my God, did I enjoy myself. Now, when third edition came out, they introduced a lot of uh, what I call the feet escalation problem that D20 had, 3.0 and 3.5. There was a million splat books with all these different options and it's up there with riffs and and riffs is I love the world of riffs. I hate the mechanics. I, if I play riffs now, it's Savage Worlds riffs because it's just a better game. The mechanics for riffs from Palladium suck. I'm sorry. It's just no, the game needs a rules overhaul badly. But anyway, that's an argument for another time. So I sat down and I played it and I played a crab. And uh, if you don't know all the histories and the lores of all the different clans, I'm not going to go into it. But basically, the game is loosely based off of the Five Rings from um, uh, God, I can't think of his name, the guy who wrote five rings, but anyway, uh, and there's these clans, the great houses, and they, they all, they rule Rokugan, which is this fictional Asian empire, very similar to uh, Japan and China kind of mixed with maybe a little bit of Mongolia in there. Uh, Miramoto, Miramoto, Miyamoto, uh, maybe I don't, I don't, yeah. Miyamoto Masashi, is he the one who wrote it? I know he's the big, great swordsman, uh, real-life swordsman. Uh, anyway, I can't remember. I, I actually have the the Five Rings book, Book of Five Rings. Uh, I actually physically have it. If you've never read it, it's actually a good read um, if you're into that kind of historical stuff. Uh, so anyway, uh, I played it. I actually enjoyed myself. I had a good time. Um, I tried to GM this or I was going to sit down and GM it. So I read the rule book with the plans of I'm going to run this game uh, when it first came out. And I just didn't like it. Plus two for this, plus one for that, minus this, da, da, da. They still had the roll keep uh, mechanic and it's still in here and it, it does work. There's just a lot of stuff to keep track of. And as a GM, I just felt like I didn't want to do that. I also see uh, we've got two, three people online now. So I don't know who else is watching, but please chime in and say hi, good morning or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. Um, James is online, so I know that's one out of the three. Um, but anyway, if you're listening or you're watching, good morning. I hope you, uh, you're you having a good evening or morning or afternoon, wherever you are in your part of the world. Um, so back to the blurb of this on the back. It says, housed within the Akoma libraries, the Temple of Tengen sits, sits the imperial histories, a chron the chronicles of the Emerald Empire, compiled over a thousand years by adept historians studied by scholars throughout the lands of the jade sun and the and and containing the wisdom of generations these documents are a testament to the favor of heavens favor of heaven their pages tell a story of an empire that is destined for greatness but as the candle lights flickering flame illuminates the history of an empire it cast obscuring shadows as well dark times that were judged better left forgotten buried deep hidden or omitted entirely. And the trenches of time sometimes diverge in places like the reflections of a scrying bowl ripple and change, becoming something else entirely. Yet every era, even those that were darkest, had its heroes. Even in those distorted images of an empire that never came to be, honor has always been stronger than steel. And it gives you four bullet points. It says, 13 new eras in great detail, including the reign of the Shining Prince, the era of four winds, and the age of exploration. Also included bold new alternate settings like the Togashi Dynasty, the Shadow Throne, the Empire of the Emerald Stars. In-depth look at the clans and characters of each era and great idea and inspirations for your own campaigns. All new schools, spells, ancestors, techniques, and more some some thought lost to the ages. So what does this give you? This is basically your GURPS. This is your uh, RIFs. This is your generic setting. Uh, it comes with a bunch of different settings, basically, just like it said on the back. Um, one of them is the Togashi era is basically where... Uh, Basically, the way the Empire formed is the Seven Thunders got together and they defeated Fulang. And th that set up the Itoma House. I think it was the, I can't remember the leading house. But it set them up because they were the only one that stepped up and said, okay, we're, we're going to run. Well, in this case, Togashi steps up. He's one of the Seven Thunders. He's from the clan, the, what would become the Dragon Clan. 
Um, and yes, he is a dragon. Uh, he stepped up and said, nope, I'm going to run the empire my way. And so it gives you a full background and everything for the most part that you need to run in that era. If you wanted to take the current history and make it Togashi instead of, you know, the Imperial house and, and what if the Togashi clan had become the Imperial house and instead, instead of the crane or whoever it was, which they, they gave him a different name. So, uh, and it goes through everything. There's one where they, there's a setting in here where the, uh, the guys on the horses, I can't think of their name. Now I'm just I'm drawn. I'm 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 horrible today, man. The uh Phoenix clan. No, not the Phoenix. Man, I'm 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 batting I'm batting a thousand here, guys. I don't have uh Unicorn Clan. Uh it's what if the Unicorn clans had uh, progressed further into the desert and met the Arabs and you know, and so that 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 genre instead of the Rokugani uh, genre. So more of an Arabian Nights theme. There's also one of in space. I mean, you know, so you can do, you know, robotic samurai and all that fun stuff. Uh, the art, you know, is awesome. So what do we got in the book? We got 310 pages, uh, full color. Uh, there's some black and white art, but it's mostly color. Um, uh, Table of Contents and a full index. Uh, it was written by Kevin Blake and Marie Brennan and a host of others. So it's got several writers in it. Um, it appears to be well, well written. I've read a couple of the different chapters and I've enjoyed what I've read so far. Uh, I got it about a week ago in the mail. Um, uh, Empire of the Emerald Stars, Rokugan in space. I mean, what more do you need right there? I think that's awesome. If you want to play your Power Ranger kind of deal, you could do that. They give you some new monsters. Um, the layout of the book is quite nice. Um, it's uh, it's done really well. I'm I'm very pleased with it. I'm glad to add it to my collection. Um, it's you know hardback. Spy, uh, it's glued and stitch binding, so it's gonna it's gonna hold up. Um, I got it off of Game Nerds because, like I said, I know they're out. Of, they're going to be out of print if they not, uh, aren't already. And I wanted to be able to, uh, to, uh, you know, say I have a copy because I have several of the books down there on the shelf. Um, so if you haven't played Fourth Edition and you're a purist like I am, and only really liked First and Second Edition, Third Edition was an abomination as far as I'm concerned. Although I did like the layout of the book, it, it, it was a nice looking book, but I, I do like the Fourth Edition layout as well. Of course, First and Second Edition were my favorites, uh, and I thought those books looked fine. And I have a ton of those source books; they're up there on the shelf. Um, but I got to say, if you haven't given it a try, give it a play. It, um, I would say, find a GM who knows how to run it. Um, I don't, I don't, I won't feel comfortable running this cause I'm sorry. I got the hiccups. I'm a grognard and I'm set in, you know, first and second edition, but I would play it. If someone was running a game at a convention and I had free time, I would, I definitely would look to play the game. I, I enjoyed it very much. Um, but I, and we made characters too, by the way, I forgot to mention that when we sat down to play that game, because it's a, it's a living campaign, kind of like Pathfinder and D and D adventures, so you have to have a character. Um, so they helped me make a whip out a character real quick. And I got points and supposedly, well, not supposedly I can, I can take that character to other games because I have like a DCI number, but it's for AEG and I can play that character and gain more experience. And that's how you level up your character, but you have to play the modules that are appropriate for you, which is not a problem because I'm like first level. Um, so it's just got a lot of cool stuff in it, man. Um, even if you're you're running like a GURP, excuse me, a GURPS game, or you're running something else, and you just want some cool ideas for a setting, um, it's a good book with a whole lot of possibilities. Um, I see we got another person watching. Um, who's ever online? Thank you, thank you for joining us this morning, this bright and early. Please uh, pop in the chat there and say hi. Um, I'm going to actually Wolf then 808. Hello. Good morning, sir. Um, I don't, I, I, I'm not sure your name doesn't ring a bell, so I'm hoping you're a subscriber. Um, as always, everybody like, and subscribe, share it with your friends. It helps out the channel. Um, I'm trying to hit 400. I'm just short of it. Um, every, every milestone I like to like to give props out to the people who helped me get there. Um, so 
it, it's pretty early here. It's uh, 730. I'm getting ready to go wake my son up and get him off to daycare and then go do my thing. It's uh, rainy and stormy here. I, I, most of the U.S., I think, right now is kind of rainy and stormy. Uh, I know down in my former state of Texas in Beaumont, uh, they got pounded. Louisiana got pounded all week. So we this is the first, we were supposed to have rain yesterday. We only we got it last night. So it's it's about a half a day short. I am good stuff. Oh, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Very nice of you to say that, Wolf Dan. Um, I'm hoping to. I've got a Discord channel. If you guys aren't aware, make sure you. Uh, it's on my uh, YouTube page. You can click on it. It should be an open invitation. It should allow you to join. Um, I'm going to get to running games on Discord because they've got camera and stuff all working now. And uh, I've got my computer all set up here at the house. As you can see, I'm trying to get I got my printer, uh, the junk table. <laughs> I got to get that cleaned up. You don't even want to see out inside the rest of the house. Um, very cool, very house built in 1904. Uh, so very solid wood house. Um, we're very happy here. Should hopefully be here a couple of years and then we'll buy our own house. Uh, so we're going on 27 minutes. I don't have much to talk about there. I, I kind of went over it. I'm going to post this up on YouTube. So those people who join later or didn't get a chance to watch it or whatever can watch it. And I'll put it on my Discord channel as well so you can watch it. I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Imperial Histories 2. Um, like I said, the game line is dead from AEG. Fantasy Flight has picked it up. They've gone to, as of last I heard, I got the last playtest document a couple of months ago before I moved. They've gone to, they still have the roll keep system, but they've gone to a proprietary dice system with funny symbols and they've got new honor mechanics and, and all that stuff. And I just was not, it made the game to me more complicated. Now, that being said, I said the same thing about third and fourth edition. And then I played fourth edition. I went, oh, it's not too bad. That being said, will I buy the fifth edition? Probably. I hate to say it, but I probably will because I'm a completionist and I, I got to get it. But I'm going to try to fill in all of these books that I don't have. They didn't put too, too many of these out. I think I got four or five over there on the shelf. So uh, I'll, hopefully I'll be able to uh, pick up the rest uh, on the cheap um, and then go from there. So unless anybody's got any questions, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, and get my son ready and uh, go do my thing. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Like I said, hit that Discord channel up and join. I'm going to try to be on there a little bit more. I'm probably going to post another video this afternoon. You need some posters. <laughs> James, I had a whole bunch of posters and they got destroyed in the move. Uh, so, yeah, if you've gotten, if you guys have got any cool posters, man, send them to me. <laughs> I, uh, I got a couple. I've got like an old Hyborian age from Conan. Uh, I don't remember who put it out, but it was, uh, I think it was a board game. But I got a cool Hyborian map for the world of Conan. And I've got some of the L5R maps. Uh, I didn't want to cover the walls and maps. Hey, Mr. Larry. Good morning, sir. <laughs> but why you don't see me? Uh, it's a funny story, Larry. The Mr. Mean moniker comes about 20 years ago from my good friend, Brian Isaacoff. He used to run a, a very popular podcast called 2D6 Feet in a Random Direction. Brian is a published author. He's done some work on some various RPGs. Uh, and he's a really good friend of mine. Dare I say, he's he's like a brother to me. Um, all right, Wolfden, have a good night, sir. Um and uh, there was a kid, we were sitting outside Barnes and Nobles and we were drinking coffee on Saturday morning as we always did every Saturday, talking about games and looking at books and reading the latest Linux magazine because we were Linux heads back, back then. And uh, this kid with his girlfriend, he couldn't have been no more than 17 years old, comes out of the Barnes and Nobles and he's, it was a Borders, excuse me, a Borders bookstore. I don't even think those are around anymore. And we're sitting out there drinking our coffee my son, my eldest son, who is now almost 20, was maybe a year, year and a half, two years at most, probably closer to two or three, because he was sitting up in a chair by himself. It was wintertime, and this kid comes out, and he's cussing at the manager, and the manager's asking him to leave, and his girlfriend's being kind of pissy, and he's just dropping all this profanity, F this, you bitch, blah, 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 you know, calling her the C word and everything, and like I said, he was like, five foot one i'm six foot 250 pounds you know i'm not a little guy I'm, I'm not huge but i'm not small this guy was like five seven if if that 
and maybe 140 pounds soaking wet with his girlfriend. And he's talking all this shit, you know. And so finally I, I snapped because I didn't want to hear my, I got my two-year-old son with me. Come on. And there's people that are being embarrassed. There's little old ladies there drinking their tea, you know, and his kids just, and I just fucking yelled at him. And I was like, I'm maybe six feet away from him. I'm sitting at the table right by the door. And I was like, hey, you might want to watch. I know, I don't even remember what I said. It's been 20 years. But evidently the kid, I, I, my dad voice came out. Yeah, I've got three kids now, a 26, a 19, and I've got a, a almost a two-year-old now. And uh, evidently I scared the shit out of the kid, my dad. And I was a cop at the time. So my dad and my cop voice, I guess they all came out together. And I, I evidently I scared the bejesus out of that kid. And my friend Brian looks at me after the kid. He, the kid apologized profusely. The girlfriend apologized. And they, they walked away. They left peaceably and we didn't have to call the cops or anything. But after they left, my friend and the manager thanked us and gave us some free pastries, I believe. My friend Brian looks at me and goes, man, you're just mean. You're just Mr. Mean. And it, the moniker stuck. So that's and I thought it was a good name for the YouTube channel uh, just because I try to give honest reviews. And some people have called me out, called me jerks and stuff. Um, but for the most part, the overall positivity has been really good because there's not a lot of guys out there doing reviews of the little known games is, you know, there's a thousand and one YouTube channels on dungeons and dragons and, you know, uh, pathfinder and, you know, the call of Cthulhu, the popular games, but there's not a whole lot of guys out there on the, uh, on the smaller games like L five R and, you know, the dungeon world type games and stuff like that. So that's what I try to do. I try to bring a little variety. I have such a huge game collection. So I wanted to make sure I, I show everything. <laughs> thanks larry he says it's a good story so mr mean it is yeah um i did a negative review the other day uh of uh i don't remember the name of the game that's how bad it is uh it's actually in in my for sale bundle i'm gonna take it to the local game store and see if i can pawn it off on them uh that's one of my trips today to then get a little cash in my pocket so anyway, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. As always, like and subscribe. Hit the Discord channel. I do have a – it's not a GoFundMe, but I do have a little thing up. Um, we're in some financial hard times right now. We got displaced because of Hurricane Harvey, and we moved here to Duluth, and we were homeless for a couple of weeks. Things didn't go as planned. I'm still unemployed. So I have a, a PayPal uh, pay me thing. Uh, you can just hit – send me money via uh, John Polak you know, at PayPal. I, there's a link on my – uh, YouTube channel. If you feel it in your heart to send a couple bucks to help me out, it, it does cost money to do this. Not a whole lot, but you know, I have to pay for my internet and everything. So, uh, if you can help out, that's great. If not, dude, just keep enjoying, hit that like and subscribe button. Tell your friends, let's get the word out there that Mr. Mean is bringing us some reviews. And if you have questions, as always, feel free to hit me up at jpolak at gmail.com, or you can hit me up on the discord channel. Uh, and, uh, other than that, peace and hair grease. And remember, be nice. And if I could find the in-stream button. Hey, all right. Goodbye, guys.